Thank you, Ms. Anjali. And again, welcome everyone. We have participants from all over the country and even abroad. And I'm so glad that even if, uh, you know, this seems to be a local issue, we have people who are health professionals, not health professionals, who are concerned about their own risk of dementia, who are taking care of a family member, and uh, who are health professionals who are taking care of probably both, no, family members and, of course, patients. So let's see my slides. Uh, National Telehealth, thank you. So what is this DEMCOV project? It's uh, the Dementia in COVID project. And I'd like to talk to you about it a little bit before we go on to our lecture proper. Dementia, uh, many of you who are here in this uh, Zoom meeting right now probably know about it, but just to review, it's really a disease that affects memory and uh, daily function and personality so that the person is now having problems with his activities of daily living. No, you cannot have just a memory problem, but that should be enough no, to affect your daily function. And the proportion really increases with age. The older you are, the more at risk of dementia uh, you are. And uh, sometimes uh, people more than the age of 90 are probably 50% of those age 90 and over are probably already experiencing some form of dementia, especially Alzheimer's. But our experts will talk more in detail about dementia later on. So there are irreversible risk factors such as age. no. As I said, almost 50% uh, of those age 19 over will already have Alzheimer's dementia, female sex, and genetic predisposition. So Doc Eva, our genetics expert, and Doc uh, Chancellor Padilla, also a geneticist, uh, they both know that the apple E epsilon 4, no, especially if they are uh, in families, will predispose uh, those even below uh, the age of 70 to have dementia. Next, please. So the Western Pacific region continues to age and the Philippines is continuing to age. At the moment, probably um, 8 million Filipinos are already above the age of 60. And uh, we are aging gradually, but by 2020, 2025 that number would be increasing even more by 2040 it's probably going to be double the number that is now and as people age the number of people living with dementia and at risk for dementia will increase so the overall burden of disease for dementia is expected to significantly increase as of the moment 2015 it is estimated that 397,000 deaths in the region, in our region, is from dementia. Next. So we did a study called Fit for Frail, which was recently completed. And uh, we looked at um, 400 and so uh, participants, and uh, many of them had undergone what we call the MOCA test, no? which is a screening test for mild cognitive impairment. Plus, uh, geriatricians were able to assess their whole physical and mental health and social needs. And we found out that the reported symptoms of dementia and mental health was so much lower than the diagnosed uh, condition. So for example, here, if you look, uh, those who self-reported symptoms and self-reported diagnosis was zero. So they had symptoms, but zero reported that they were diagnosed with dementia zero reported that they had the diagnosis of anxiety and only 0.7% knew and reported that they had Alzheimer's disease. But our geriatricians, our physicians in the study were able to detect 9.1% of our participants to have dementia. Next. So looking at the other symptoms of mental health in this study, uh, many reported sleep disorders, and uh, many reported depression, but uh, the diagnosis, however, was a little bit different for sleep. The true sleep disorder was only about 30%, and the true diagnosed depression was only 20%. So in this case, when it came to depression and sleep, there were more self-reported symptoms than there were uh, diagnosed conditions. But look here at cognitive impairment in the middle. Uh, nobody, 
had reported symptoms of cognitive impairment or uh, previous diagnosis of cognitive impairment. But when we did the MOCA test, 24.4% of them had mild cognitive, or had the risk, by the way, risk of mild cognitive impairment based on the MOCA test that we conducted. Next, please. Uh, another risk that we identified here was social isolation. And we know that people with dementia, uh, they cannot handle themselves, no? They, need, they really need help. And social isolation was a big problem. 4.2% uh, reported being alone or living alone. Next. So these are all risks for an increase in the complications in COVID, no? So older people, uh, and people with pre-existing medical conditions such as hypertension, diabetes, and obesity are more vulnerable and have a higher risk of death. We also found out that those with COVID have also a higher vulnerability and a higher risk of death uh, if uh, they have dementia. So COVID quarantine also increases the risks of older persons for having mental health problems such as what I had already described. Next. And uh, other risk factors of age and COVID are the disruption of med medical access and social care services. So our patients with dementia have difficulty uh, getting follow-up care with their doctors and maybe even visits from their nurses, uh, social care services, including uh, access maybe to good food, nutrition, and medications. And of course, their caregivers can also become sick. So if the caregiver of a person with dementia gets sick, who will take care of them? So these are some of the true issues that uh, our patients face. Next. So we did a policy brief, and this is already published in our Facebook page. If uh, you have a link there, you will see it. But we did a policy brief looking at the risk of uh, COVID-19 among older persons. Next slide. And uh, we really looked at how many had risks of uh, hypertension, diabetes, dementia, mental health disease, who were frail, et cetera, what programs are available for them. Uh, and then, of course, finally, next, we had some recommendations, recommendations to government institutions, recommendations to, for example, aligning the service delivery, both in the local government unit with PhilHealth, with DOH, et cetera, and uh, the establishment uh, of a national disaster response and resiliency uh, program, and of course, support for communities. So this is where we are now. How do we support not just persons with dementia, but the communities, the families, the health caregivers, the barangay that take care of people with dementia? So next, please. So let's talk also about uh, where we are now situated in the many WHO WIPRO dementia projects. This is not the first WIPRO project on dementia. Uh, the mental health unit has been helping us create this dementia community toolkit for workers in low and middle income countries. So this was published uh, just a few years ago and it is available for free online. Just text that WHO Dementia Toolkit for Community Workers. And this really talks about what is dementia? How do we recognize dementia? How will you, who is, who, those of you who are not health workers, be able to help persons with dementia in communities? What is the role of the community in dementia? And uh, this so far, fortunately, has been rolled out. Uh, we have partners here who have been uh, using this toolkit. Uh, our Ger Gerontology Nurses Association of the Philippines, the, the Alzheimer's Disease Association of the Philippines, our geriatricians uh, are able to now roll this out as a uh, useful material. Next. However, we pro mental health unit realized that the COVID pandemic is really a challenge as I had described earlier. And therefore they wanted us now to develop technical resources to support health promotion among older adults living with dementia during COVID. And they also want a Filipino version of that dementia toolkit so that there is now more awareness all throughout the country. 
we have been doing a lot of training of health workers in the past years, caregivers, etc. Uh, we ha even had a blended learning program with DOH. But this is the first time we now will be having a local version no, in Filipino that has been adapted and translated and uh, we piloted it recently. Next. So you will be able to now access this. We will be sharing this eventually when we have the final version. Dementia Toolkit para sa Komunidad. Gabay na tulong sa komunidad sa pag-asikaso at pangangalaga sa may dementia. At makikita natin dito, Tagalog na po ito, no? senyales at sintomas ng dementia. At uh, meron din po tayong mga checklist dyan para sa mga community workers kung ano ang pwede nilang uh, ma-check na dapat gampanan ng kanilang barangay sa pag-aalaga sa mga taong may dementia. So, our next webinar will be in Tagalog and it will be about the toolkit. So, this is webinar one. We are here now. We will be talking about specifically COVID-19. But next week, same day, Saturday, same time, 9 a.m., ito na po ang ating malusog na pagtanda at demensya. Para sa inyo na, uh, na gustong malaman paano iwasan ang demensya at ano pa ang dapat gawin para maiwasan ang demensya, ito po ang webinar para sa inyong lahat. No? Ano ang demensya, nutrisyon, ehersisyo, paano gagawing ligtas ang bahay para sa demensya, ano ang kaugnayan ng malusog na pagtanda o healthy aging at demensya. So, meron na po kasing movement internationally ngayon. We are now realizing that healthy aging, as long as you keep to a healthy aging program for yourself no, and the community also, and in a public health perspective, we can also reduce the risk of dementia. So, yun po ang ating uh, matututunan. Ganon din, meron din tayong guest, si Dr. Binluan na galing sa DOH. Ano ang tungkulin na ginagampanan natin sa komunidad? So we will see you again next Saturday. So yun lang po at maraming salamat. Over to you, Ms. Angelique.